the fall away whisk. This figure commences backing line of dance. Oh, one, two, three, and finishes facing diagonal center. We'll try that again. This figure begins backing line of dance. Oh, one, two, three, and finishes facing diagonal center. And now for the man's timing and alignments. This figure begins backing line of dance. One, two, three, and finishes facing diagonal center. And now for the man's foot positions. Left foot back, right foot to the side, and slightly back. Left foot crosses loosely behind right foot in fall away position. And now from a different alignment. Left foot back, right foot to the side, slightly back. Left foot cro crosses loosely behind right foot in fall away position. And now for the footwork. Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. And now for the ladies timing and alignment. We commence this figure facing line of dance. One, two, three. And we finish facing diagonal center against the line of dance. And now for the foot positions. Right foot forward, left foot to the side. Right foot crosses loosely behind left foot in fall away position. And now from a different angle. Right foot forward, left foot to the side. Right foot crosses loosely behind left foot in fall away position. And now for the ladies footwork. Heel, toe, toe, heel, toe, heel. And now for the technique in this figure. Gentlemen, we're going to start off standing on your right foot. Now, the sway that you have from the prior figure, I'd like you to maintain as you lower and use your range of motion through your right leg and hip. Instead of dissolving the sway, I want you to maintain that sway for the next two steps. One, two. Now. As I lower and rotate through my range of motion, I want to think of creating a curved line through those next two steps, knowing that the lady is on the outside of the turn, so we're going to be aware not to turn our upper bodies too quickly. I'm going to keep my right side forward, diagonally forward, to her as long as possible. It's very important if I turn towards the camera not to be overactive in the torso turn relative to the base. So if I face the camera and I rotate through my range of motion through those next two steps, I'm keeping my right side forward so that when I go into my fall away position, I can then make the transition of my upper body. So I'll demonstrate that with Heather. I think we'll back the camera for this so you have a better view. So I rotate to the inside of turn, curving, allowing her to come around me, and then I'm still maintaining my shape. Okay, now from this position, we're going into a fall away position. So I want you to think again of these three points, the feet, the low center slightly turned to the right of the feet, and then the high center turned even further to the right than the low center. And that is the position we're going to achieve as we cross behind. We're going to have a strong sense of pulling across through our thighs, our hips, our rib cage. Even though we're stepping toe heel, toe heel, there's a strong diagonal shape there. Now the reason we need that is because if we maintain that sway to the right too long, there's a strong possibility that we'll continue moving backward. And of course, once we finish this fall away whisk, we want to of course come forward in our promenade position. Okay, so I'll back the camera for this. We have one, two, three. Now I'll just finish off by saying that as I dance from my right side being forward and I create those diagonal shapes that we've talked about, I want to feel that my upper body then can, my elbows and arms may dance across my body to allow this portion, if I just stand towards the camera here and just simply let my rib cage to my hands and arms move across me. Now, not too far across because we do not want the lady too far behind our hip, but definitely we're going to pass the lady across to that right side that I'm standing on, okay? And now for the ladies. 
So for this figure, ladies, what I'm trying to think about is I'm very, very aware of my right side traveling forward, even when my second step is a side step. What I think tends to happen for the ladies here is the minute the foot position is aside, the body thinks side. So I have a little rule that I feel within my body that my body is always traveling forward at all times. Even when it appears and looks like it's traveling backwards, my elbows and my back belong to my partner. I never, ever, ever think of taking my upper body backwards ever at any time. So. Sometimes, ladies, when there's a foot position that's side, don't ever think that your body's traveling side. Even when the uh, foot position is side, still feel that you're traveling forward through your partner. Now, when I use the word forward, don't think forward as, as far as a pressured point through the body. Just think forward, pick up the spine. If you're always aware, ladies, of your abdominal and central area through directional actions, there won't ever be a specific pressure point that comes out through your body. It'll be a neutral feeling of energy, but not of pressure. So what I feel in this figure, ladies, is, I'll just, I'll just try this with Victor again, is I'm going forward, and as I take this next figure, I'm thinking basically only of my waist turning. And as I turn my waist for the actual whisking action, my back and my body still feel poised very, very forward towards the man. So try not to allow the shoulder blades or the back to collapse down. And that's something I have to be very, very aware of because I, I have quite big shoulder blades and if they're not picked up, this area can look heavy. So the center is always picked up. I'm always aware of my waist area turning so my back can appear light and forward at all times.